Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. All right, 6.30, time for that fact that makes your brain go. Instead, it will save you $26 every time you go to the grocery store if you do this. And it's not a special coupon download. It's not going to a certain grocery store that might have a better deal. All it is is don't go to the grocery store on an empty stomach. Eat oh. before you go. That's all it is because they've calculated this. And every time you go per trip, it's twenty six dollars more if you're hungry, or if, if can you're... you like vouch for that? Because you go to Costco hungry, which I mean that's got to be a lot more than twenty six dollars because you buy a year's worth. Now this is the joy of Costco; mm. they give you free samples there, so sometimes you can satisfy your hunger for a little bit with the free sample ladies. Oh, you, know you walk I mean? around and eat all this stuff. Is there, have you ever turned down a sample at Costco? Has there ever been something that you're like, not that? It, it, yes, and then they then I feel bad for them, and they look at you like. You don't want mine? What's wrong with what's wrong with what's wrong with my muffin? I, I just I'm not feeling that muffin. I'm a not girl feeling said it. to you, "What's wrong with my muffin?" <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Yeah, it's an old lady though. <laughs> They're not, there's no. It's not like a strip club there in Costco with the sample ladies. It's still an awkward conversation <laughs> out of all the food you could have picked. Yeah, there was one guy I remember that was really working. He was holding his arms up. Come on. No one wants this to a sample. <laughs> what, what was it? It was actually um, a sample of a smoothie. Oh, and I would have drank a smoothie. It, but it's it refreshing. Looked, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, and the guy was just like, the only time I walked right past one is this guy was giving out samples of V8. I'm like, that's I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good. That's fine. You feel bad Looks for that person. Warm. Yeah. <laughs> I see your little cart next to you. I don't need warm tomato juice today yeah. for free. Yeah, this guy wanted to go to him like, man, get it together, bro. It's okay. You know, I don't know if they get paid on bonuses if they give out more. I don't know how it works. Oh, um, because maybe, maybe get- or or if people buy the product. Yeah. Maybe get a nickel. They, they got, man, they'd be <laughs> slaying in those toaster ovens. They, they remind me of an adult Easy Bake situation going on over there. They have the little convention things that heat up. They're trying to cut small yeah. pieces. <laughs> it's very I'm like, accurate. I've been there. I feel you. <laughs> Gotta wait for the stupid light bulb to make it. It's a tough day. Yeah. But I will tell you, at the same time, going to Costco, impulse buys are huge. And I will, I'll go in there to spend, get two items. Like today, I'm going to go. I need egg whites. I need milk, organic milk. I need gas. I'll get out front because gas is ridiculous now. I'll get that. And I know I'm going to walk out of there spending $200 somehow. Oh, for sure. Because last time I went, I got a whole new Tupperware system. Like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> Son of a nutcracker. I needed fruit. <laughs> I was just here to return something. Uh, well, buy one, get one. I know. So obviously. And then I had to go home. It was all glass. And I'm like, well, it's better for my family. I should obviously do this. Yeah. So then I had to go home. This is the worst. When you commit to something like this, it's not a project. So I have to go home, get rid of all my other Tupperware, find ways to recycle it, wash all these in the dishwasher. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I just committed to seven hours of work. Yeah, I think this number's low. I think if like, you go there on an empty stomach or whatever, like buying that kind of stuff. Like I said, Case goes every day, and he says, I don't know what I'm going to get for lunch today. Calzone, he goes to the Jewel right by his house. And Do you then- get lunch from Julasco every day? Kind of. Don't be embarrassed by it. Be proud. Well, I mean, you're, you're European. Food, food has to come from somewhere. It might as well come from Jewel. Why? Okay, two things. We have a Whole Foods that is an actual, not even two minute walk from the station. Uh huh. And they have like a really good like hot bar of food. I love their pizza. Yes. So you could do that. And we're also really close to Mariano's, which is practically a restaurant. So why are you going to Jewel every day to get your food? Because I'm not hungry here. I'm hungry once I get home, and I don't have those options in Uptown. I just have the Jewel. And then on Sundays, I go to Target, the Lord's Day. (laughs) Why do you go to Target? You go to Target for food? Well, I go to Target to kind of hang out on Sundays. They don't have a hot bar or anything. <laughs> well, no, but they have a Pizza Hut in the Target. And as oh, I've said. Oh, you have an old school Target. There's still a Pizza Hut in yours? Yeah. There's a Pizza Hut and it is dynamite. What is it, Target for the 90s? What is going on? <laughs> I, I haven't seen know. a Pizza Hut in Target in forever. There's more than you think. In Targets, Pizza Hut. No. Yeah, yeah. There's one in the one in Lincoln Park on Clyburn as a Pizza Hut. Now I only see the Starbucks and I see the Target Cafe kind of casually, but that's been faded out. I haven't even seen a Target Cafe. What they yeah, do? Yeah, they do like they, where you can get like slushies yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, you're exactly right. I grew up in the Target Cafe. Period. That was my favorite restaurant as a kid. And now they're becoming more of a walk by, kind of like how the airport is versus like a cafe. Yeah. Like a lot of new Targets, it was kind of it's like vending like cold machines almost. Yeah. So they have that, and then they have the Starbies, okay? Yeah. But that's about it. I'll tell you, the Uptown Target, where he's talking about, is like the Wild West on Friday nights. It is... 
people coming in there wasted from all walks of life all walks of life and first off you got to kind of do a perp walk to get in there because <laughs> the people out front are almost guarding it by the bus stop there yeah i, and, would, I would agree with that statement like i've got you got to do prison rules like no eye contact keep going and then they're gonna talk to you just it's keep like moving. walking after riot fest yeah, it, is. it is and then you get in there then it's like you know people just their stuff thrown, getting thrown on the floor and they're grabbing like 18 things to eat because it's a pretty good target for food. They got like a, a whole grocery store in that they, one. They, they do. And then the problem is you get your food. And then by the time you're walking to check out, you have to walk by the baseball card section. And that's right <laughs> next to the to the Target Pizza Hut. Oh. And before well, I you imagine know it, they knew their clientele that was interested in Pizza Hut, but also like baseball cards. Yeah, there's a case is coming. <laughs> and it's like, oh, there's another $40 I'm going to spend on a box of baseball cards and a pepperoni pizza. Oh, my gosh. So, Case, when you go into Jewel to buy your lunch every day, do you buy more then? Or you just are you do have self-control and you just buy the thing? Because you're hungry when you get there. This is, this is the thing, is that I'm very unhappy with my body and my weight, but it would be so much worse if I snacked more than I do. I don't have any snacks in my house. The only food I have is for lunch and dinner and then breakfast the next morning. I don't have Chex Mix. I don't have Lay's. I sometimes will get, like, a yogurt to chew on i like Ew. yogurt first off you can't chew on that yeah what are you <laughs> chewing you, no no no. i get the m&m yogurt well that's not surprising but that's not healthy then right i didn't say it was healthy i just said it was tasty have like, you listened to anything you said <laughs> oh, do you think his health is his main goal well i never heard him say yogurt before so i thought oh my god he's trying to get healthy but it's m&m's yogurt or sometimes yeah. i get the gogurt yeah, because you're four. Yeah, because it's awesome. <laughs> I like sucking out of the tube. Somebody, I bet you do. Uh, Kelly checked Mind in. Mind you, your Saturday nights. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Kelly checked in with a conversation on this show for the last week and a half. So would you call Jewel a restaurant? I would because of the chicken. <laughs> Uh, See, you can't tell me this, chicken that good, fries that good. They're not made in a restaurant. That's restaurant quality. This conversation started with discussions of is Subway a restaurant, which it isn't because there's no waiters or waitresses. It's not a restaurant. It's a sub. It's a sandwich That's shop. That's so hoity-toity. No, it's not. It's re- reality. That's what it is. <laughs> you can't call everything a restaurant. Well, Kate's is going to bring his girlfriend to the Target Pizza Hut. So <laughs> As if I understand. haven't already. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's living good. <laughs> Do they have waiters? She's allowed to walk through the dollar section at Target after and I pick yourself out something real busy. nice. <laughs> do, they, do they have waiters and waitresses at the Target Pizza Hut? Oh, they have somebody that serves me my pizza. Yeah. Oh, Not to your table. Not to your high top. No, the, uh, the Starbucks bogards the table. They won't let me dine in there. That's the problem. Well, that's Starbucks isn't interested in, your, in you. <laughs> <laughs> they know that you're not the gold client. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> I can't pronounce any of the drinks. I, exactly. Also, Aaron checked in and said, Case sounds like he climaxes when he talks about Pizza Hut. I'm just saying... Don't knock it until you try it. The Target Pizza Hut is one of the best things we have in, in Chicagoland. <laughs> it's fantastic. That is... You know all those food blogs and TikTokers for Chicago? <laughs> Case is going to walk inside Target and <laughs> be like, this is the hidden gem of the <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101 tomorrow being 420. Roll another... <laughs> oh, good. Is that a version? Another more clean versions here. Thank God mm. I have YouTube Premium. Really fast find these things. It's great. La- all right, so what are some of your high thoughts? I talked about when I found out OJ got cremated, I just wondered for a minute on the couch if he ever even existed. I wasn't high. I, I wasn't high at all. I just, are you sure? It's one of those weird thoughts. But you know, at that point where you're just kind of just sitting on the, whatever you're doing, and you're exhausted, or maybe you are inebriated. I didn't have a beer in me. I like drinking beer, and I didn't have any beer in me either. That sounds a little random as hell. I like drinking beer. I love beer, man. Um, I love this text that we got. This is a really good high thought. Yep. Why do we bake cookies but cook bacon? What? That's a good one. <laughs> that's a really good one. Another one of those that's similar is why do we park on the driveway but drive on the parkway? All right. Oh, yeah. Vibes. That's deep. Vibes. Um, I don't know if you remember this, Kenzie, but when I was talking about why we don't live on the moon, he's a space nerd here, mm-hmm. and Case brought this question. What? How did you ask that question, Case? Uh, this so, is a couple months back. You, you had said that by this point in your life, we should have been able to live on the moon, that that's something that should have happened by now. Right. And I'm all for that, with the exception of the fact that I don't think it's possible because, n- like, no one goes in the moon. You understand? We land on the moon, but we're in the Earth. 
Right, like when you're standing on the Earth, you're just like you're standing on a. You're uh, in on it. the moon, yeah. Right. Yeah, but you're on no. top of the moon. Like no. if we built a building on the moon, it would just stick out into space. And say, oh my God, Kenzie, thank you, Kenzie. Yeah. Don't go along with this. But she's right. He thinks no, we you live. You built a, like a skyscraper. If the Sears Tower was on the moon, it yeah. would just be sticking out. Right. But, but when it's, it's on Earth, <laughs> it doesn't stick out. No, it doesn't no, stick because out. We're, we're you don't see it jut Have out you ever from the seen Earth. Seen someone walk on the moon. I watch the videos. We, oh, think about us walking around. We don't have like stars behind us. It's not like the Milky Way is right behind us. We're like we're in our planet. And no, we're not. We're on the Earth. We're not in the Earth. We're, we're in the Earth. We're not in the Earth. But no. But <laughs> if somebody, if Neil Armstrong was like, I'm gonna run it back, right? I'm gonna walk on the moon. But then when he comes back, he's in the Earth. We don't see him way. walking on the, on the Earth. Think he's, of it this way. If an alien went to the moon, mm. okay, think about what the what the picture would look like with the stars and like the other planets by Sure. Him. If an alien came here, it would just look like he was in Chicago. Thank you. But you're we're still you on the be earth. Like, oh, look at that. No, but like we're in, in it. In the earth is underground. We're on he's not we're not we're on the earth. But do you understand the difference between being on the earth like, and being on the moon? Explain it to me. Why why does the moon got nothing going on like that? Cuz they don't have an atmosphere like we have. So no, does no other planet have an atmosphere? Some do, but not like a livable, breathable, like that can support humans' so atmosphere. So there's other planets that if you land on them, you won't see them, like because they'll be in it. Yeah, you'd go like in Jupiter. You go in <laughs> Jupiter. Well, Jupiter is actually kind of liquid. What? Once? <laughs> you sound is it just, so, is it you frozen? so hard. Is it like frozen liquid? <laughs> like an ice cube? What do you mean? Or, or, uh, Jupiter's atmosphere is liquid. So if you landed it, you would just swim. <laughs> right. You wouldn't be in it. You'd be swimming on you top just, of you it. you swim upstream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Well, listen, tomorrow being 420, uh, you celebration however you do it. You know, I don't partake, uh, but I like drinking beer, man. But, Why do you say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> but 420, uh, the weed smokers holiday, of course, and we'll be off the air because it's Saturday. We do we are on Saturday, you know, eight to ten. You can always just make sure you listen in the morning while you're doing your wake and bake going on there. But we're talking about high thoughts because I've had them. Uh, when I heard OJ got cremated, I wonder if he ever even existed. And we were all in a simulation for about a good seven, eight minutes on the couch. Huh. Yeah. I don't know. But I, that, uh, I, I don't I don't know what to say about it. I feel like if anything, he's left his a very permanent mark where you would think he for sure existed. Clearly. I didn't go down that wormhole figuring out the dead bodies. I just didn't yeah. know how to go there. But uh, what are yours, some of yours? And we have a lot of people checking in. Uh, Kim from E-Town checked in. Good morning. I always wondered if Bert and Ernie were little adults or kids with an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh. Uh, more high thoughts. Um, if you were this one, this one just freaked me out for about three minutes. What? If you were born deaf, what language do you speak in your head? Oh man. Oh my god. Huh. You, don't, you don't know what anything sounds like. I grew up with a guy that was uh, deaf, and I want, now I'm just thinking about that. I, I mean, I can I don't know how to sign. I can write it down and ask him. I guess. I don't. I, can't I, call. I, I don't no. know because well, sign language. Some people don't realize this, by the way. Sign language is also per language. Like there's American sign language, but there's also like Spanish sign language. Like not there's not one sign language no necessarily. Way. Yes. So ASL is American sign language, which I used to take. I'm actually decent with sign language, but only like English. Is that, is that weird? Good. Because think about it, because you're you're like you finger spell and you do things like that, so you're using the American alphabet. Mm. Isn't that kind of crazy? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. You um, thought ASL was just age, sex, location. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a tool that people Drop can a use. Pin, to, baby. Yeah. <laughs> those AOL chat rooms, man. I was a king in those. Oh, I bet. I Not bet. a king in the in the reality. In this simulation we're in where OJ got cremated, I'm not. Also, one more from Elaine in Oak Lawn. Uh, your life can't fall apart if it was never together in the first place. That's like the opposite of a Target home decor spot where it's like live, laugh, love. That's just the opposite of it. Yikes. Yeah, she ain't going to Home Goods and getting those signs. All right, here we go. Uh, also checking in is Matt. Uh, what's up, Matt? Welcome in, man, on a Friday. Oh, hi. Morning, crew. Yeah, what's going on, bud? Well, I... Wanted to correct you about Jupiter. Oh boy. Jupiter is 
you know, it's not liquid. It's gas. Well, here's the thing. But, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> so I was going to say it's, it's, it's a similar composition to the sun. It's, it's hydrogen and helium, but it doesn't create fusion. Helium? So, like, if you so... breathe on it, does your voice get really high? Like, hi, I'm on Jupiter. <laughs> I'm on Jupiter. <laughs> does that happen? Yes. <gasps> That's fun. The problem is... It's a several hundred degrees below zero, so you you would be dead. You wouldn't be able to do that on Jupiter. Oh, so it's super cold. Super cold. Oh. Yeah. Well, here's my argument Is it on that. Snowy? Uh, it's not snowy. It's stormy. A lot of storms going on on Jupiter. With no snow. Uh, Wouldn't the rain freeze? There's no rain. It, it rains, I think. What kind like, of storm is it? I think there's it no rain, snow, there's I, no rain. I, I believe there's like acid rain on Jupiter. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Take good that luck. off my travel list. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I, my argument is a little bit because I am a space nerd that I get the hydrogen and, and the helium part of it, and there's a solid core of Jupiter. But then they say, because we've never landed on there, there, that there's parts of it that are massively liquid. I, you're right. It's gas and liquid. But uh, why wouldn't the liquid be frozen? Um, because it's, it's not, so cold. it's not water. It's not like our Acid water. Acid can't freeze? Not different temperature. Huh. But it's not, it's not considered liquid because it is simply compressed hydrogen. So yeah. it can be like a well, metallic obviously. hydrogen and it can be dense, but there's no acid rain. There's no liquid water. There's no methane. It's compressed hydrogen, which is a gas. Are you a science teacher? I actually sell steel, but I'm just a space nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. We should hang out and go look up at the stars some night. Oh, jeez. This is uh, pick a blind lookout. What'd you say? <laughs> I said as long as we can do it without pants on. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Looks like Saturday night's all set. <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate you checking in. You guys should check out Uranus instead of Jupiter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> These are our high thoughts going on here, so please check in at 312-591-8300. Uh, Rio the Mailman checking in. What's up, Rio? Oh. Oh, sh- Brian, what? did you hang up on him? I did. That was Rio, mean. Here's the, okay, here's a little behind-the-scenes thing. I love Rio the Mailman. He calls all the time. God. He always calls after we're done with segments, so we have to move on. He called in right on time today, and then Brian hung up that on him. That was so mean. Okay. He, probably, he was probably delaying his shift. He's going to be at work even longer. You can't deliver mail and talk on the phone at the same time. It's very confusing. I've seen mailmen on the phone. <laughs> no. <laughs> I never have. I always do. That, uh, you know what? That's a high thought. I've never seen a mailman on a phone before. No, That's no. It's way too distracting. Yeah. Imagine that. Not- you see Amazon people because they take a picture of it, but mailmen don't. Well, there's a high thought. There you go. How do you know mail's being delivered? Pro- all of it's being delivered then. Well, it's not. Do you remember my baby shower advice? <laughs> <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, and it's become a classic bit here on Fridays around this time at 850. In case the producer has not seen any, and I mean any, big classic movies. But now it's been six weeks. He's seen things like Braveheart and Shawshank Redemption. I don't need to go through all of them now, but he's said himself he's a better person because of it. You guys keep recommending him. And this came from Kenzie's world of saying he's got to see Dirty Dancing. He's seen Roadhouse, so he's seen that Patrick Swayze movie. But he's never seen Dirty Dancing, the 1987 classic. So before he gets to his review, this is from the lens of a 25-year-old guy who has no clue what the movie was about before he watched it yesterday. And here's the trailer for... Scared of everything. Most of all, I'm scared of walking out of this room and never feeling... I mean, the guy, though, is doing almost like a horror movie. (laughs) In a world. In in a world. These dance people. (laughs) It was a little dramatic. I think it could have had, like, a sweeter feel. Yeah. (laughs) It shows the world of movie trailers in 1987. So, interestingly enough, that movie did not have a big budget at all. Mm. Okay? Um, And an interesting thing about it is they were having a very, very hard time even though it was a dancing movie, to get music cleared because of how expensive it was. Oh, okay. And they were struggling because they wanted popular songs in it. So I don't know if you noticed, but there is a scene where you hear the song She's Like the Wind, right? Yep. Written and sp- uh, produced and sang by Patrick Swayze. Mm. He had written that song years earlier, and when they were struggling with music, he brought up to them, I have a song that I think would be great, and essentially I'm not going to charge you a bunch of money for it. Because I'm already going to pay for the movie. Yeah, so they put it in there because he wanted the movie to be successful. And so he didn't write that song specifically for the movie, and though it ended up in there, and they really, really needed it because they didn't have enough music. They didn't have the budget for it. I'm just saying, before we get on the case's review of it, the budget was $4.5 million for Dirty Dancing, and box office, it cleared $214 million. Wow. 
That's pretty huge. Not a bad return on investment. So Case, Case watched Dirty Dancing yesterday for the first time. What do you think? Give us your review. Dirty Dancing, a story of forbidden love, summer romance, and of course, dancing. <laughs> all in all, I want to like this movie. Okay. And I think we're in a situation, because Kenzie, I know you're fanatical about it, and I know there are so many people on the text line that are so fanatical about this movie. Help me like this movie, okay? Okay. Because I thought the acting in it was phenomenal. Patrick Swayze, who three weeks ago, I had never seen one of his movies. <gasps> I, Shocking, right? I know. I watched Roadhouse and I watched Swayze, this. Baby. <laughs> you're crazy for Swayze? Yes, I love him. <laughs> Between this and Roadhouse, I feel very comfortable saying the man was quite good at his job. Thank you. Uh, just a, re a remarkable performance in both of those films. I found Jennifer Grey, that's her name, right? Yes. Yep. To be wonderful in this movie. I enjoyed uh, her entire vibe. The problem is that I just don't like dancing. I can't tell good dancing from bad dancing. I don't. Now, I'm not necessarily impressed by any sort of dancing. I didn't think these people were cool for knowing how to dance. <laughs> and that is a big hang up in this movie. I feel like if this movie was about, if it was the same storyline, but they were playing soccer or something, I'd be into it. Right. I'd follow it completely. Yeah. I struggled with this just because I'm not sure these people were cool or not. I, I would, I would have okay, no. Okay, wait a minute. I would have no interest in learning the lift or the the mambo number five or whatever they called it. Yeah. it was not mambo number five. <laughs> <laughs> well, the movie was set in 1950 something. Yes. So it was set in a world that's that's in a world <laughs> in, in, a, in a world where people go to North Carolina to a remote dance company. Well, this is mentioned at the end of the movie because they're they're in the 50s and the guy who runs the dance camp is like, oh, something about this place. I don't know. It's like kids don't want to come learn to foxtrot with their parents anymore. <laughs> they want to go to Europe instead. It was like, yeah, I want to go to Europe too. I don't want to foxtrot. Yeah. I, I get your vibe, and I, I know like every there's not a woman I've ever met in my life, and my wife included, that just doesn't love this movie and the romance and what it's what it like your vibe how, you're talking about how can you not look at them and go well they're obviously dancing like better than you can well anybody can dance better than me can but than i'm I can. saying but than, than me can <laughs> <laughs> anybody can dance better than me can it's, uh, <laughs> but, but here, let me explain it to you kenzie because it's i understand what he's saying as a guy who doesn't can't dance and doesn't like dancing either and i'm impressed by people that can dance the thing is, in a movie, in a drama where you're in that, you're. Tr I think what he's trying to say is, I can't get emotionally attached to the people because I don't care about dancing. Completely. Is that Com what you're trying completely. to say? I would rather, I would rather live in a world where nobody dances than I get better at dancing and men as a whole get better at dancing. It's just a part of society that I'm not sure needs to be there. Yeah. Every wedding sucks because I can't get on the floor and shake it. I don't know how to but do that. But that's like a you problem. I, but, so I, you, like, but then you can appreciate dancing. Like, you don't see Patrick Swayze and go, my life would probably be better if I could do that. Well, my life would be better if I looked like him. I was uh, taken aback a few different times by his muscle tone in this movie. He's... This is probably the movie he looked the most attractive He's in. unreal. I don't know. Point break. He's, a scr <sighs> he's scragglier in that one. He's but, a little scragglier. But he... He wears certain things in this one. A lot of open shirts. Oh, yeah. Very open. This is the thing that really does it. I mean, I, I don't know if there's a guy out there that will say he loves Dirty Dancing to death. And I'm not trying to be, you know, gender on a movie, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Because you just can't, some people can't attach to, in a movie, you want to be emotionally attached to the characters. You know what the scene that he looks the hottest in? I have to, I have, no, go ahead, Kenzie. Because you made, it has nothing to do with dancing. It's when he beats the crap out of the other guy. Yeah. And I was like, well, I would date him. Well, that's a new sure. thing, then, too. That's a new thing on that no, one. No, absolutely. That's my problem. <laughs> I love guys that kick other guys' asses. It's true. So, Kenzie, when you watch a movie like this, do you just dream about being the woman across from Patrick Swayze just the entire time? You just wish this was your real life? Is that the sort of vibe I get from you? Yeah, and like I think I would do a lot better. I think he didn't enjoy me more as a dance partner. Yeah, well, yeah. You it wouldn't rhythm. have taken me that long. Yeah. She starts we with just nothing. Been <laughs> <laughs> I've been like, I'll fill in. Let's go, baby. <laughs> what, what did you like about it then? I know you don't, you're trying to want to like it, but is there some parts of it that stood out that I you were the, like? I thought the individual performances were awesome. I liked not only the two main characters, I loved the sister. I want a whole movie on the sister because she was a weirdo. But she like, oh, Olive. Yeah. Well, who? <laughs> it's almost like, who was Popeye's wife, Olive? Yeah. 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 She, she was the me. most awkward person <laughs> in the entire world. She's like a girl at Columbia College Chicago. Like, she's who I went to.
went to college with. I, I liked her a lot. I liked the dad. I thought the dad was super good in his role. That's how I get attached to the movie, because he was in the first version of Law and Order. The oh, dad really? was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, the only thing I ever thought was a little odd about the movie is that the father was so mad at the daughter for someone else getting an abortion. Yeah. Did anyone ever feel like that? was like, she didn't even do it. <laughs> no. Like, I was like... I, I don't understand. Like, he he didn't so want he didn't want her associating with people that got an abortion. I think that's what it was. Which can we talk about that for a second? Not a good, not a good angle. That's that's the scene of the movie. That I just kind of go, ugh. It's, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. He's like I thought better of you. I'm like she just tried to save someone's life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What did she do? <laughs> she tried to help. It's the most unnecessary plot point that I think I've ever seen in a movie. That woman could have sprained her ankle and been unable to dance also. I That's don't understand. Fair. I don't uh, understand why that needed no, to be in the movie. But I think what they were trying to do was really highlight classism, okay? Because the guy that the father thought was so great was, an was really the one was the reason that the girl got an abortion. Okay. And not Patrick Swayze, who's looking out with these negative glasses. So I think it was kind of, you know, showing that society saying that certain people are better is not accurate. Does it make you a better person? Mm. Kinsey, I think that's a great point. You're helping me. You're helping me like this movie. But I'm you still don't there. like it. No, no, no. Hold, I'm almost there. I'm very close. I'm almost there. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah. The baby have, said. Well, speaking of baby, so I have one big question because the one thing I knew about this movie going into it was the line, nobody puts baby in a corner. Amen. Right. I know the Fallout Boy song. It's my favorite Fallout Boy song. They have a song called that. I expect it. Oh, Nobody puts baby in a corner. Oh, God. <laughs> what a voice he Even had, too. the way he says it. How, how unfair is it? <sighs> how unfair is it that you're that good looking, that talented, and you still have a voice like that, too? His voice is, it's just unbelievable. Uh, Brian, don't you wish you sounded like that on the radio? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody puts baby in a corner. No, you sound <laughs> you like should. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Wait, did that sound like him? Did that sound like him? Let me see Nobody puts baby in a corner. Oh, my God. Nobody puts baby in a corner. I believe it. That's, that's pretty good. Is that good? I got yeah. it. Mm. Here's, here's I'm going to go home and say that to Megan when I walked in. <laughs> She'll take off her clothes right away. All women take off their clothes right away to this movie. Uh, this is this kind of fire. That's nice. Way to ruin the entire premise of romance. <laughs> that's romantic. When I go, when a girl takes off her clothes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So here's the thing with that line. I knew about that line going in. I would argue one of the most famous lines in film history. It's up there. I was expecting it to be this big dramatic confrontation. And yes, we love his voice. And yes, he's good looking. But I was expecting such a different delivery from it. And instead, what happens is this scene takes place during what is really the final scene of the movie where they're doing some sort of 50s performance that has been lost to time. I didn't understand what they were doing. <laughs> and he walks in, he interrupts the play or the song or the show. I don't know what it was. Yeah. And he just says, nobody puts baby in the corner. And I was like, oh, that's it? I thought there was going to be something big. I thought there was going to be a bigger payoff. That was the most d underwhelming part of the movie was that line I had such high expectations for and that it just didn't deliver. Did you picture him strangling somebody kind when he said it? Yes. Like, nobody puts baby in a corner. I can't no, believe that's what happened. Uh-uh. Uh, the problem is that you had already heard the line. When you're watching that movie, <laughs> when you're watching that movie with fresh eyes. That's a good point. And he comes in there and stands up to the dad, okay? Mm -hmm. Makes a statement, you know, rein reinforces how important this woman is to him. That's sexy. That he's coming in like you're not going to do that. Like that's that, like that's this guy's daughter. He walked up to a dad and said that. I don't Think feel like about, <laughs> you're not understanding. You would never have the balls to walk up to your girlfriend's dad and well, be don't like, turn this into a case bashing. <laughs> no, you wouldn't either, like, and be like, uh, uh I'm, I'm almost valuing her more than you are. She's more important. You don't put her there. It's like, ooh. But he could have, he could have said it with the emotion that you just had. Instead, he walked in and like, it was like he had dip in his mouth. He's like, oh, nobody put baby in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> <play again. laughs> So Nobody puts baby in a corner. He does. He's got a pack and a dip he's there. He's like one step away from Boo Howl. Like he slurs words. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q 101.